Hi. Awesome. Hi, Jen. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to have you on because I've we've had your now husband at the time when I interviewed him was it's your boyfriend, John, Sean Sidey, who has been on the podcast actually twice. And he's given us so much value. And through him, I started following your content. And I just, I'm just always so impressed with the content that you put out there. And I just feel like you have so much value to provide and have so many gifts that you're putting out into the world. So I was excited to bring you on and um, just ask you some questions, questions that I've, that I was curious about as well. And that I know that will help other people. Let's get started. Like I, one thing that was really unique to me with your journey is you don't have the typical um, just had weight to lose and lost weight, then became a trainer. Your journey is kind of, um, it, it has different phases to it, I guess, different levels of, of evolution. Do you want to talk to us about your journey in this, like your own health and health space? Yeah, for sure. And it is definitely has been an evolution of me over the past like decade. Um, and there's definitely different layers of it, but I'd say starting back would probably be in my early twenties when I got into nursing school after high school. And obviously when you're in your early twenties and you're in school, that's a really big transition, right? It's tough. You're committing to a lot of classes, hours of work. And before I went to college, I was actually very competitive. I grew up with three brothers. I was always into sports, cheerleading, basketball, all the sports you could name. It was just what I grew up with. And then as soon as I got into nursing school, that all left. I felt very lost. I felt mm. very consumed in my studies. Um, and I, I, I didn't realize I was losing parts of myself till it got to the point where um, I found out that my grandmother had died from pancreatic cancer. And that was a very big moment in my life where I was like, okay, like, you know, I'm in nursing school. I, I want to really help people. And, you know, I'm at a place where um, I'm not feeling too good myself. And one of the biggest breaking points that I had back then was when I was at her funeral and they took a picture of my whole family and I saw the picture. I looked back at it and I was like, oh my gosh, who is this person in the picture? I don't recognize her anymore. Like, who is she? I was 20 wow. to 30 pounds overweight. Um, and at the time, a lot of these symptoms that I was feeling like lack of energy, um, my clothes weren't fitting me as well anymore. I was buying clothes two or three sizes higher. And I just realized one thing with two things. The first was, you know, okay, you know, I'm, I'm getting older. This just comes with age, right? The low mm. energy, uh, you know, feeling, you know, gaining weight, all these symptoms. I had really bad migraines at the time. I would never have disability, disability, like um, uh, really hard migraines. And then on the second part, you know, I was like so shocked about how I looked that I was like, okay, I needed, I needed to change. This was something that I can't, I can no longer accept. And I feel like a lot of women can relate to this, especially mm -hmm. when, you know, sometimes when we're not feeling like ourselves um, or our health doesn't become a priority, we start to hide away, maybe not take as mm -hmm. much many pictures. So that was a really big turning point at the beginning of my fitness journey. And I knew I had to make a change from there. So I, I started working out again. I started going to the gym and was able to accomplish a little bit on my own and get active. Um, but there was still a big gap and that I was missing in my life. And that was that competitive aspect. So, you know, right. like I said, I was very competitive growing up and I needed that kind of outlet to kind of level myself up fitness wise, but also mentally too. And that's when I kind of transitioned into being a bodybuilding compet uh, competitor wow. and getting into that realm. Um, I just connected with a few people I knew at the time, got myself a coach, and that really changed um, everything about my fitness, which was a whole journey uh, in and of itself. Um, you know, you probably know this, but, you know, bodybuilding is a totally different realm of sport yeah. when it comes to your fitness, right? It's not just a team sport. You're doing a lot. You're dieting really hard. You're doing a ton of cardio. You're not, you're, your eating regimen is your eating, your diet is like super restricted and regimen as it should, right? You're competing for a show and you've got to get to this level of leanness um, closer to like maybe 10% or even less percent body fat yeah. to hop on a stage and wear a bikini and all of that and stuff. So going through that experience was quite honestly, quite phenomenal. 
but there was a lot of negative aspects to mm. it. Um, I did very well. Um, you know, I won my first regional show, my second regional show, oh, amazing. a national title. So, you know, that competitive fulfillment really came through and mm. I enjoyed it. However, um, unfortunately, there was a lot of downsides to it. So uh, we were talking a little bit about this before, but I was actually a vegan at the time um, and vegetarian. So my diet was very, very limited. And being on a like a vegan or vegetarian diet can be somewhat challenging because you're very limited at the amount of protein um, that you consume mm. in terms of variety. So I didn't realize this at the time because when you don't know, you don't know, right? So yeah. navigating through your nutrition was tough because I was very depleted. It was very restrictive, like I said, and um, I ended up developing a really, really bad relationship with food mm. um, through that. Um, even though despite winning, despite all the success, there was a lot that I had to sacrifice. And I sacrificed a lot of my mental health, obviously the physical health component, component. I was on birth control at the time, but when you're training to that extreme, some women can lose their periods. So um, there was a lot of things outside of just the fitness and the nutrition that also impacted my body. So after that, you know, kind of phase, I was like, after my last show, I was like, I'm done. It was the toughest I ever dieted. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. I'm taking a full break and I'm just dedicating to like living essentially, because when you're competing, there's really no, you don't really yeah. have a social aspect. You're, it's just literally work, sleep, gym, and then, you know, repeat. Right. So um, through that journey, um, I realized actually coinciding to like working as a nurse because I was also working in as a nurse. Oh my goodness. So yeah, you could imagine wow. how, um, how exhausting that could feel from yeah. working as a nurse, like full time and actually working on yourself, prepping for a bodybuilding show. Mm -hmm. I was getting hit in both many directions, but something through that journey was very, was very pivotal in my life because I realized there was a huge gap that I had in my knowledge because I was getting education and mentorship from a coach. And then I also had my education that I was, my education from nursing and also mm. things that I was seeing in practice. Um, I was working at a cosmetic dermatology clinic. So there was a lot of things that I was seeing that a lot of gaps I was seeing in between in terms of how can we help people with their nutrition and fitness to help people get healthy and fit. So there was, it was a very interesting pair of uh, uh, kind of two journeys go in, happening at the same time as I was leaving the uh, bodybuilding um, industry. And then also, um, also my nursing career too. I realized there was a the gap in my knowledge. So I took you know, the ownership to educate myself, you know, I became a certified fitness nutritionist. Um, I, you know, took extra courses, courses on personal training and things like that to really educate myself. And it really allowed me to um, learn a lot about my body and what I could have done better. Um, and at the end of the bodybuilding like show, I actually transitioned to from being a vegan, then vegetarian, then pescatarian, then a full <laughs> on meat eater. And I haven't given it up since. Um, because I just I, I went through such an extreme uh, dieting phase that it just kind of catapulted me to the other side of health of really learning about nutrition, fueling my body the right mm -hmm. way, um, educating myself, but also really inspiring others through my story and my journey to uh, really taking a root cost based approach rather than a very surface level aesthetics based mm. driven approach. So there's, it's been kind of a unraveling of unlearning, relearning and learning new ways of fitness and health. And, you know, now I'm at a place where I'm healed my body from the inside out from not just a physical aspect, but internally uh, hormonally as well. Um, you know, I was on birth control. I was on PCOS. I had PCOS mm. at the time. So really wow. taking, I'd say maybe closer to three to four years of improving my body from a health standpoint. And that's something that I dedicate myself and as well as the clients I serve um, so that they don't see or, or make the same mistakes that I did um, in my early twenties. So that's mm. uh, pretty much wrapping up kind of everything that I've been through up until now.
So. Oh my goodness. First of all, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for going into some detail with it because there was so much, um, there's so much in your journey that people can relate to. Like, first of all, I felt really emotional when you first talked about that photo you took with your family and that you didn't recognize yourself. And I, I think that photos are so powerful. Like a lot of women have that moment. And when I ask them, like what I'm always intrigued about these moments that kind of change change things for someone even if they don't act on it they know that was the moment that they had kind of that shift and photos really play a key role for that my I had the same thing um a few years ago with a photo and I was like wow and and you're right it's it's not about what anyone else thinks because to other people you look people don't judge you as much as you judge yourself I would I would think and um it's really about you feeling matching the outside with how you want to feel on the inside. And so when you feel that disconnect from a photo, it's really, um, yeah, it could be really emotional and powerful, really. Yeah, yeah. I never took any photos of myself um, during that time because I just knew that I was not treating myself right. I wasn't, my body wasn't as, as a good place. So I, I, yeah. I agree. A lot of people can, re- a lot of women specifically can relate to that. And it, it holds, yeah. holds a lot of women back from, from really kind of like loving themselves and stuff. So. Yeah. And it's, and also, you know, another point is you were trying to do it all. And when you're going to school and you're doing all the things, um, a lot of women kind of get into that, into that spiral of, trying to do everything and then what comes last is often ourselves and our health and yet that's the thing that we need most I know recently I've been going through such a busy period of life and I remember thinking it's only for a short period of time but my health will be number one and everything else has to come second because like you said like without it what what do we have um I like that you the the competition was interesting that you went from kind of into that extreme arena. And I love that you talked about, um, I think I agree there are positive sides to it. And a lot of times these competitions, that was one thing as a trainer, when I moved from London, I was in London, England for 12 years as a trainer and then moved back to Canada. And I was surprised at how many women were fitness competitors here. Like it wasn't really a big thing over there. And um, I found that interesting. And how extreme it is like I couldn't believe what what it takes and so I've always had a conflict with it because often I see women that go into these fitness competitions and it's actually the catalyst for change which is a a wonderful thing but then on the other side is that dark side where you're saying like it goes to show what you see isn't really what's happening so someone that looks in that kind of shape may look like they're super fit and super healthy and incredible yet often they are falling apart because it is so restrictive and so taxing on your body yeah yeah I I, it was something I wish I someone would have told me going into it I wish someone who Mm -hmm. would have educated me on the downsides and what I had to do actually prior to competing because you know, something that I do now with my clients is that I always get them, I always kind of treat them body, treat their body as a whole, I get them feeling healthy and looking healthy first, before going Mm. through extreme measures like that. Being a competitor going to bodybuilding is great, if it it, great for, uh, you know, a very challenging standpoint, but there's a lot of risk, especially for women, from Mm -hmm. a hormonal standpoint, metabolic standpoint that they need to be fully aware of. Um, Just like, doing anything extreme or even taking a medication, you need to be fully informed on the positives and the risks. I think the positives yeah. that I got from it was the fact that I were, was able to reach those extreme limits because yeah. people often, we have this form of balance, right? We all are striving for balance, but it's important to understand and experience both sides of that spectrum mm. of like being kind of like, at your lowest truly, and then going to an extreme of being super disciplined. And obviously that's a spectrum, but every individual is going to look different. And like you said, it's a phase, it's a catalyst to really get you started, but it's definitely something not sustainable um, and healthy um, for that matter um, in your fitness. Yeah. Empowering. It's almost like that the industry, because like I, I do think there's positives to it. It almost has to have the training after the training, like how do you get yourself 
back into a healthy state. It was not too different from when I was running marathons. Like they were so terrible for my body. But by the time I did the third one, I was strength training. I was getting regular massages. Um, I was doing it so differently to the first two that were done on sheer will and 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 men, like mental willpower and so the way my body responded was so much better but if you like you said if you don't know you don't know yeah yeah and I think that all comes down to um who you you choose to work with as well right it's because you yeah. really when you are dieting to the extreme you are, are in a very vulnerable state and so you put trust in mm-hmm. the people who guide you the coaches you invest in and so it's really important yeah. to find someone who's super educated in that And I think, you know, from an emotional standpoint, and even just from like my nursing background, it's important to assess the individual that you're um, working with and to see if they're mentally, emotionally, and physically at a good place to get to that next level. Um, You know, when I went through that, I had a poor, I developed a really bad relationship with food. Um, uh, You know, after dieting, like after um, I went through my last show, there were moments in my journey where I was hiding food from Sean, I would go and Mm. run to convenience stores just to get a meal and like eat it in my car. There was a lot of things psychologically that I had to deal with for a good three, six months, if if not longer, to get me to a good place um, and kind of rebalance my relationship with food my relationship with my body and body dysmorphia. Like I just wanted to look lean like that all year round. And obviously that's not realistic, but it's that kind of um, rebuilding that you have to do after that phase of a a dieting stream, dieting phase like that. Right. I love that you're like, you're so um, authentic and so honest with, with what that looks like, because that could be really embarrassing for people, even especially if they're going through it in the moment, like the, the idea of hiding food and um, having those negative thoughts about your own body. And it it can be really hard to admit. I know like I work with women who don't have great relationships with food. So whether someone's been on the extreme journey that you've been on, or it just comes down to, it could be anything. It could be the um, situation that they were raised in that has given them this, this um, bad relationship. It could be being with a partner that makes them feel uh, like low self-esteem and and it disrupts their relationship with food there's like so many like there's such a huge spectrum of, of as to what can trigger that do you work with women like um do you train them now for competitions or do you work with like the average woman like who do you generally work with yeah when I was in my bodybuilding days I was definitely working with a lot of competitors at the time um and a few lifestyle lifestyle clients, but I primarily now work with uh, women, um, essentially wow. a lot of busy women, um, more health, uh, who have more health concerns, um, like PCOS or people are getting off birth control, um, but a lot of like working women, like even moms. Um, and it was something that I even worked with when I was in my um, bodybuilding days. Um, it was one thing I always got inspired um, I always got inspired by was all the women, uh, all the moms I was working with because they always had, they always found a way. And, and obviously right. being a mom, right? Like you, there's so there, you, we have very little time. And so, um, that's who, that's who I primarily serve, but I work with a lot, a broad range of, uh, women, um, uh, busy working women, uh, particularly. So. Amazing. You on, on your um, Instagram, it says that you, um, help women to get stronger, not smaller. Can you talk about that? Because I I love that. That really stood out for me. Yeah, yeah. I love that mantra. That mantra uh, came about maybe in the last couple years because I wanted a phrase that really embodied my story, but a, a, a phrase that would also be very relatable to a lot of women. And I think mm. we've all grown up to, um, you know, when we think of dieting, we think we need to be the skinniest version of ourselves, super lean, super toned, right? When really, when we think of health, it's more so not just the physical component and, but also the mental component as well. And so that phrase in itself, um, comes in two kind of pro it's like a two-pronged approach where you know you are not only building your body um but you're building your strength right you're getting stronger building muscles is, is a crucial component to mm-hmm. um not only looking tone and having kind of that aesthetic hourglass figure but in terms of a health standpoint having as much muscle as possible as a woman mm-hmm. is going to benefit you from a metabolic standpoint if you want to eat more food um 
yeah. you know, hormonally as well, but strength, right? Energy is when, you know, having kids and when you're getting older, um, it's great for recovery and stuff. So there's so many benefits to uh, getting stronger at the gym rather than thinking, okay, how can I lose body fat and get, lose weight and have that mm-hmm. particular number on the scale? And then the mental aspect is very important because when you are, when people say we're getting leaner, you're losing weight, you're actually, you're actually pretty weak, you know? And so when you think of getting stronger, we need to build that sense of resiliency um, and mindset. So, um, you know, I mentioned, I I grew up with three brothers. I also um, grew up with, uh, you know, separated parents. And so there was a period in my life where I had to choose to be mentally resilient and confident in, you know, the decisions I'm making as I kind of grew up as a, as a young adult and that philosophy of just building your mindset, being resilient and really leveling up your mindset is, is, is key. Um, not just what fitness does for you, uh, not what it does for you physically, but what it does outside of just fitness, right? So getting stronger of, you know, mentally, mm-hmm and what that does for you and your family and your kids, um, how you show up as a spouse or a coworker, you know, you know, that fitness is, um, or just developing your mindset and getting stronger, um, does spill over in like other areas of your life. So that's something that's a phrase I live by. And it's something yeah. that I continuously, um, kind of affirm in my head, um, uh, as we kind of go on. So. Yeah. I love that. It is. I think that's the one of the greatest honors being a trainer is, it's so magical and it never um, loses it is it's thing is watching women get physically stronger, but then how it also impacts them so positively in other areas of their life that they weren't expecting and, and confidence is, is one of them. It's so amazing to yeah, yeah. witness that. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to add uh, additionally to that, it, that I should have started off with was I'm uh, my name on Instagram is tiny fit Jen. I'm only five feet tall. So <laughs> from th- that phrase really resonated with me because I kind of grew up being someone who was always small or always having kind of living beliefs, beliefs of being physically yeah. smaller. Um, but also from a mental standpoint, you know, I didn't really Love have that. a voice. I was very quiet. And so through sharing my journey, I got stronger, obviously with my fitness, I got stronger as well. And now I'm, I'm very like blessed that I've been able to really share my truth and, you know, share my story on Instagram. So it's a very, yeah, really deep connection with that phrase. Amazing. I love that you explained your name because we often wonder like how people choose their, their like handles and stuff for social media. Very cool. Um, Women come to you mostly, I'm sure for weight loss. And I know for a long time, I really struggled with before and after photos, because I didn't want to be part of that weight loss world. And then a great client of mine, she's like a a marketing genius. And she just said to me, um, if you don't, if you don't market to what people think they want, you'll never have any clients. And she's like, what your marketing doesn't always have to resonate with with your values, what has to resonate with your values is what you coach and what you, what you teach and how you help people. And so I got over that and it's true. Like I have a lot of women that will come to me for weight loss, but that's not necessarily what I teach. And I know from watching your content that that's not necessarily what you teach either. So when women come to you for weight loss, um, and, and that's a legitimate struggle because we can, again, that not recognizing who we are, I don't want to diminish that either. But what other challenges are they coming to you with besides just the weight loss? Because that's not usually the only thing that's impacting them. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think when we first think about our fitness, or or at least start our fitness, or when people, I think, approach me or approach you with with coaching, it's usually coming from a place of um, lack, or they feel like they're not happy with themselves. And usually it does start Mm. with like weight loss. You know, that's how I started my journey. You know, that's how many women start their journey as well. Um, I think it's kind of the norm. I think we've also been conditioned through social media and years of things we see uh, online that, um, you know, dieting is something that people usually get started with. But I think what a lot of people like some of the challenges or things that things that people face is um, understanding, I think they're relationship with their body and the relationship with food are major like components that I see, but also Mm -hmm. kind of helping, but also like educating them on, um, 
what that actually looks like and really kind of sustain the results because, you know, starting your fitness with fat loss, because like, just like me, I wasn't happy about how I looked in the mirror, happy about how I looked on in photos. It got me started because I didn't like the way I looked and ultimately had a very negative relationship with myself and it got me started, but it didn't keep me going. It was, it's not sustainable. Right. right? So building, um, building that internal dialogue um, and building that relationship with yourself is a huge challenge and struggle that people kind of have to unlearn when it comes to, you know, taking Mm -hmm. progress photos, having a good relationship with the scale. These are all things that are super internal that we don't realize. So really kind of shifting that perspective, Um, And helping my clients kind of navigate through that um, will help them kind of overcome a lot of these mental struggles and challenges that people come to me with um, alongside the physical, obviously, changes and struggles that people um, uh, want help with. And they usually go hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. You touched a bit on it, but what are like, how do you help your clients and like, what are some of the unexpected results that they that they get? Because I know that clients aren't with you just for like, some you may have for six to eight weeks, but I know that you also have longer term clients. So um, what are some of those results that they get and, and what are some of the processes that you take them through? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I have a very 360 approach, like at Health and You, we have a 360 approach in what we do. So our our main um, uh, pillars of health in you is to look better, feel better and do better. So this philosophy stands for, okay, looking better is really going to help you from the physical standpoint, right? We're going to help you with, you know, feeling good training, having more energy and strength. Um, But there's also the nutritional component, which is are feeling better. So we want to make sure that you are taking care of um, really healing your body from the inside out and making sure that you're doing things the right way. Um, Because oftentimes when people diet, usually just restrict their diets as well. But we really care about, you know, making sure that you are good, you are healthy first before you you diet um, or want to lose weight. Um, And then lastly is doing better. So when you're feeling good, you're looking good, you're ultimately going to do better in life. Mm. You're going to do better in at work. You're going to do better as a, as a spouse, as a mom, um, or any, you know, sister, things like that. Mm. And we see the impact it does to our clients. Um, and just to add to what you had asked, you know, I help my clients take them through every stage of their journey, not just with weight loss, but a health phase if they're having if they're dealing with things metabolically and hormonally um, that they need help with or um, if they want to level up and go through a phase of of really building muscle so um, a lot of women fear gaining weight um, you know eating more food these are kind of unknowns that a lot of women mm-hmm. don't know how to navigate right they just want to go through a fat loss phase lose weight and be done with it but what do you <laughs> right. do after that and that phase are is crucial to um, success, not just in the short term, but also long term as well. So we take them through all those stages. And then I do if if people really want to level up, because they know I have a competitor background, we'll do like photo shoots or even get them to a bodybuilding show. So, you know, we kind of take those through those phases. But um, yeah, we kind of encompass all of that in, in, in our more of long term clients. But Mm -hmm. ultimately, you know, especially working with me, I I really value education um, because I think the more you know, the more empowered you will be to make informed choices about your decisions because having a coach and telling you this or that isn't really gonna, it's gonna help, but it's, it does create this kind of like all or nothing mindset or just not a a full confidence in your own decisions. And if you want to continue and do it on your own, you have to be educated and be aware of your, of you know, the choices you make. And ultimately that creates a lot of success. And a lot of women, I'm sure you've seen that with your clients too, Mm -hmm. where they feel confident and empowered about the decisions that they're making because they have that autonomy. So that's also really important to me, um, just from my own background and my own fitness journey and just kind of following things blindlessly, right? Like blindly, um, you know, with people you trust, but it's always important to have that education too, because you can't, once you know, you, you take that with you forever. So Yeah. Oh my gosh. You said two things that I loved so much. And one is, yeah, I'm all about the education. I used to say to my clients, um, well, I still do, but but there comes a point where me telling them isn't empowering. They have to understand why they're doing something. And so I'm all for education is, 
extremely powerful. And um, too often we do see that where people are just, they want the plan, they want to follow the plan and that's it. They don't want to understand why it's working. And it's in the understanding that you actually make something long-term and people are always like, how do I turn, how do I t- turn a 30 day program or a 60 day, whatever it is into a lifestyle. And that's how it's to start to educate yourself around the why it's actually working for you. Yeah. Yeah. I love and that. I think, I love that. and I think you, I think you, I, I, you mentioned something that's super important in the fact that like with having kind of that informed understanding um, about nutrition, I think that really makes a huge difference to the level of adherence and consistency mm-hmm. that clients build. Um, because when you have a plan and you just, you don't really have the confidence in the plan or you don't have yes. the knowledge, you're more likely to question it. You're more likely to find different avenues or easier yeah. ways to get somewhere faster, which usually That's is right. not going to, usually not going to work, you know? So having that understanding, or I guess that really collaborative approach to to coaching is is crucial and you don't always get that with a lot of coaches some coaches are very like just here's your macros this is your cardio that is it and then you have those other people like us where we will take the time to educate our clients and that's why it's so individualized to uh uh, yeah to that approach yeah I mean I have a good friend that ended up with an eating disorder because of being with a coach that was like you can only eat these foods and this amount yeah. and that's it and they became so paranoid with food and I'm like Ugh, it's because you you know they didn't actually learn about um, nutrition and why these foods are good for them and why they make them feel better yeah it was um you have to be so careful yes um it's also why I'm really careful about who I bring on right because it is about putting value out there and not adding more confusion to people because I think generally um people are very confused about what the right thing to do is. And I, mm-hmm. I loved uh, both with you and Sean is that your approach was just so balanced and so based on health. Um, something else you touched on that I thought is just so cool and, and very valuable. And I don't know that anyone's ever touched on this yet is that there are different phases. Like you don't always need to be in a weight loss phase. No. <laughs> and when I tell women, when I'm like, okay, yes, you're in a calorie deficit for like, this amount of time but after that we're going to actually start to increase your calories and like that kind of blows people away because they're like what like they always want to be in the weight loss journey but there comes a point where there's no more weight loss to be had and you and you won't desire that and if if you are if your health is going to be long term you can't always be in weight loss I I just I like to look at the year as seasons like like there's certain seasons where I'm in a bit of a weight loss phase because that feels good then then I go into a muscle building phase and then you know and so looking at the at the year it it just takes off the pressure like you don't need to always be losing weight so I I think that's so empowering that you touched on that yeah, yeah, I I love that um, analogy of seasons because that's how what that's what I say to my clients um, when it comes to you know when someone's finishing a dieting phase. Um, these are the conversations I have where, you know, they need to know if you want to be able to sustain your results, you have to go through these phases. And oftentimes, um, you know, some of my clients may feel a little resistant. And I, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised because it's yeah. definitely a, such an unknown. And usually, Different. it's usually just from a, you know, a, a you know, an intuitive standpoint, we will automatically stick to what's familiar and what's com- and what's in your comfort zone. Yeah. And most people live and yeah. live and stay like they start and end in a weight loss phase. So yeah. there's a lot of foreign, a lot of challenges, but also a lot of perks um, and a lot of mm-hmm. amazing things that can come from these phases, like a growth phase, a health phase, even and just living in maintenance. I think that there's a lot of uh, a lot of people mm-hmm. see the downsides because often our minds will naturally think of what can possibly grow wrong, go wrong rather right. than like training ourselves and actually taking us through those uncomfortable phases um, yeah. and evolving and 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 um, growing not just physically but mentally as well so that they can understand what to do and pivot and adjust through like you said every season yeah. um, of their health journey and. I want to add a a little bit, add on to that phrase itself that I say to my clients is every, um, every level has its own devils. So every level that you get up to is going to come with its own challenges and, Mm -hmm. and, and, um, 
you know, those mental breakthroughs that you have to overcome and barrier. It's like, you know, building a business, right? You're always going to yeah. level up and there's always going to yeah. be new challenges that you're going to face. That's it's right. not necessarily bad, but it's just another yeah. way of leveling up. So helping, you know, our clients really kind of changing their perspective around it yeah. and the benefits and just like really, you know, um, reiterating these benefits can really help catapult people to not only see those results, but like keep it like long term. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, you're right. Like this is not a conversation that, that people are having for the average woman. Like, like mm-hmm. you have these conversations when you're bodybuilding or you're very involved in a particular sport for performance. Those conversations may happen for some women there, but not in general. And I remember having a conversation with someone who, um, they were, they were panicking about not um, accessing the gym in the summer. And I was like, yeah, I don't strength train in the summer. I really don't. Like right now I'm in a, in a phase of building muscle because it's winter. I'm in Northern Canada. Yeah. It makes sense for me to hit the gym between October and up until March. And so I go heavy with the weights and that's my focus and I'm loving it and I'm building the muscle. And then come summer, like I don't want to be in the gym. I want to be on my paddle board as often as possible. I want to be going for hikes. I want to be going for long walks. And so that's where like the seasons like really um, really you can, you can set up your training program according to the actual physical season. And it just keeps things interesting. Like by the time I'm ready to be done with the strength training, I am ready to be outside and I'm sick of the gym and and seeing those same walls and the weights like, you know, and then I'm ready for it again in the fall. I'm like, Ooh, I can't wait to live heavy. And so, um, that's just like another way of looking at it. And I think it's just healthy and keeps us intrigued and, and, um, not being bored yeah 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 I totally agree it it does help uh um help help uh women really kind of hit those milestones and and not feel like okay like when is this dieting phase gonna end or you know they kind of like lose motivation um and you're right like as humans or even just animals too right we go through those seasons for a reason so um following it in hand and and with the the time of year it is like it's it's it it is beneficial like I have a lot of clients right now we're going through a bulking phase and I was like yes enjoy your holiday like enjoy yeah. the food like have a break yeah like, look how strong Amazing. you're getting you're hitting prs like you're seeing good growth and yeah. like your physique this is awesome like you wouldn't get this yeah. same amount I of kind that. of like food freedom um and you would in a dieting phase so enjoy it right so yeah, yeah i love that i love that and it's really just personalizing it to you and and where you know what makes sense for your life and and how it fits um you there's something that really caught my attention on instagram and that was you had a post that, um, oh, it was so good. It was about not shaming yourself into becoming healthy. And I think this is huge. Can you just touch a little bit on that? Like why that came to you as an idea and the response that you've gotten from it? Yeah, I think I, you know, it was something I was kind of reflecting on. I think I saw another, uh, like a, uh, another video of something kind of similar that really resonated with me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize this was something that I was doing for a very long time. And it was, you know, shaming my body to being fit. And oftentimes, like, you know, from that very beginning of seeing that picture about myself, you know, when you see something that you don't see, like, you're going to naturally look at it and like, pick at it, right? Like, it's very easy for us to nitpick all the things we don't like about ourselves rather than things we do. And that's just natural to how we're designed. We're designed as human beings to look at all the, you know, the things that could possibly go wrong, right? As an instinct. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that we do that to ourselves from an internal dialogue standpoint. And so, you know, when I was at that stage of just like picking at everything in my body, even when I was um, in bodybuilding and dieting, like I thought I wasn't lean enough. I was like, I need to be, wow. leaner. I need to be leaner. Like I have this amount of body fat at this part of my abdomen. How can I get it off? Like it wow. was just kind of distracting. And yeah, it got me to a certain place. I was very successful in that. I got my, you know, I won first place and all those things, but it, it tore me apart afterwards mm. and it totally catapulted me to the opposite side of the spectrum. And so, um, 
you know, shaming yourself and maybe, you know, starting something because you're just not happy about how the way you feel and look and definitely, you know, it can get you started. A lot of people start that way. Yeah. Um, but the best thing you could possibly do is to change the narrative um, and reframing your thoughts to loving yourself, loving your body, respecting your body and appreciating yeah. it. When you change those words to how you say, like to what you say to yourself, it becomes so much more like empowering and you could actually look at these things that actually help us feel healthy and fit and allow it to really kind of allow it to become part of our identities, not just because we want to look a certain way, but because of what it does for us. So that's a whole like philosophy that I really embody and try to get my clients to do too um, when they really want to shift their identity and and their physique long-term. I love that. You know, I always say that too, like you don't have to hate where you're at in order to also desire to change and to better yourself. It's like, we don't go into, for example, you didn't go into nursing and do the courses and put the work in by saying, I'm so dumb. I can't do this. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like you can, you're still wanting to progress and achieve something great by, by, being positive with yourself and saying like, yeah, you can do it. And, and um, yeah, I think that that was so, so powerful. And I know that would speak to a lot of people. Um, There's something interesting. So you, um, I know you use progress photos, get clients to weigh themselves, the whole thing. And I do too. Now Um, I would say this has been an evolution for me in the last couple of years. It took me a while to actually be okay with it because I was so worried about triggering clients um, and putting the focus maybe on the wrong things. But I know you use them, even though they can be triggering for some people, especially that scale and and not wanting to take the photos. um, Why do you use them? And why do you feel that it's important to use these tools? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I get my a lot of the my clients to do this because I think it's really important, especially if you have an unhealthy relationship with the scale. First and foremost, it is such a you know it's it's a way of measurement, but it doesn't tell the full picture. And mm-hmm. um, taking progress photos is another add layer of a metric that you could track that really shows a, a really good you know, uh, perspective of how your body is changing and evolving over time. But I think in terms of your relationship with just looking at yourself in the mirror, getting uncomfortable, um, you know, and feeling really comfortable about doing that, I think a really big struggle, and this is something that I had when I was going through like bodybuilding was that I didn't, I didn't have that positive internal dialogue. And I think that's more of like the root cause of figuring out, okay, like, what is, what are things that you're saying to yourself that you don't like and how can we shift that narrative of um, the positive things that we do love? And it's such a, and I'm so glad that I took it at the time and I, I got, I got mm-hmm. uncomfortable with, with taking these progress photos and something that I do if um, that actually got me getting more comfortable with myself or just looking at myself in the mirror or um Uh, comfortable with my body at the time was taking um, like form check videos, like at the gym, like filming myself at the gym was another thing that I started building. Um, And I think that really helped me build a relationship with my body and myself. But something like you said, too, like, you know, you got to love your body at every stage. You know, you probably have done this. I've done this so many Mm -hmm. times where I took pictures of, uh, of a photo of myself that I didn't like. And then maybe six months or a year later, I'm like, what the hell am I, was I talking about? <laughs> so I'm true. like, I looked freaking phenomenal. Look at yeah. me now. Like, you know, it was that kind of like comparison, so true. you know? And so I, I choose to look at her, my past self. I always refer to any younger version of me, whether that was yesterday or a year ago or Not 10 that. years ago. I, I think it's very important to practice self-compassion and to appreciate kind of you know, where you are at your journey, obviously, you know, always strive to do better um, and step out of your comfort zone. But it's, it's important to build that relationship, no matter what stage you're in. Um, because yeah, when you, you know, look back, you, you, you may regret it. So I'm very happy. I've documented most of my 20s and my fitness. And I have so many archives of my past self that I could look, look at, be proud of and, and really Love showcase. That. So yeah, it's a very great way to, to kind of document your story. 
Yeah, I love that. And I agree with that. Even with the scale, like I find I just hop on the scale every day. <laughs> like it's just not, there's really no, um, the number has no meaning to me, but it is a tool. And so often, sometimes it'll tell you like when your cycle is about to come, because all of a sudden you put on five pounds, but nothing has changed, right? And it, I think it's really empowering for women to start to see the, a trend as opposed to yeah. a daily number. Like the, the yeah. trend is really what matters. Yeah, you're looking at it at a very micro level when but when you yeah. zoom out from a macro level, it could really you could really see you're like, oh, I'm actually doing pretty well. And yeah. from like you mentioned, from, you know, having that unhealthy relationship from this uh, scale, we often we tie it so much to our identity and um, whether we're successful or not. And so one thing that I did and, you know, like aside from like fitness, um, you know, another thing I was super uncomfortable with, and this kind of can go in hand in hand with like pro taking progress photos, but there's a fear attached to it, right? We're scared yeah. of facing the truth. We're scared of yeah. um, really, that's what it really is, yeah. right? We're hiding and yeah. we're trying to avoid what's right in front of us. And so yeah. we do that with our bodies. We do that with money. We do that with other vices yeah. in our lives, right? Like I had a, I, you know, back then I was in a lot of debt, like in my early twenties, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. mind talking about this because it was yeah. an uncomfortable thing in my life where, you know, me and Sean had to have that discussion, right? Like as a couple and spouse yeah. growing together and I was feared it. I feared it a lot and I avoided the discussion. I avoided like sharing that. And then there was one day where I sat down, it was uncomfortable, yeah. but I knew it needed to be done because now yeah. I was able to overcome that. And oftentimes ourselves, we will naturally protect ourselves mentally from facing the truth. So it's yeah. kind of that un like breakdown of failure and just those overcoming and understanding yeah. where those fears coming from. And it's not necessarily bad or good. It's just a natural kind of like coping mechanism that we have um, that we just need to kind of like put aside and really allow us to kind of push through that level of resistance. Yeah, I love that. I love that you talked about the debt because I was in a similar situation and I did a whole episode on it and had someone come on actually um, talk about money and, and all the things because I, I, cause that could be, that's also something that impacts health because it's very stressful. And, um, and I find that the principles for health and the principles for business and the principles for wealth, like there are principles that will help you in all areas. So if you can start to become disciplined in this area of your health, it will often help you to become disciplined in other areas of, of your um, life as well. And so I think that's so empowering. I love that you touched on that. And it is, it's about facing the truth and um, yeah, and tracking. <laughs> that's yeah. how I got myself out of debt is I just started tracking every single penny and allocating yes. and and it's very similar to what we need to do for health is we need to start to track what we're doing, whether it's in the gym or with our food. And, and um, it doesn't mean you have to track forever or be as um, aggressive all the time, but you definitely have to go through a phase of being there for sure. I always say maintaining is easier than the, than the getting there. You're never going to work as hard as you are now. And then your body will give you allowances. You can then go on those vacations and enjoy those meals that only come up once in a while anyway and thoroughly enjoy them guilt-free and that's kind of like the payoff that you don't always have to be like that and same thing with getting out of debt you might have to be super strict to get yourself out of there and start to build that wealth but then all of a sudden you have that freedom of like grocery shopping and not looking at every penny that you're spending right you could just have a little more freedom in that in those areas so yeah it's amazing that you brought that up mm -hmm. so what do you want to say to the woman who it's like, oh, okay, this conversation really has me reflecting and I know I need to make a change. I feel like I'm getting there and I'm ready, but I'm still really scared to get started because what if, what if this is just another time where I start and then I fail once again and I'm on that crazy cycle of start, stop, start, stop and, and feel worse than when you started. For sure. And I would kind of challenge that person and be like, what if you don't? Like, what if you actually made it work? What if you actually saw the wins? What if you actually saw um, 
the positives and and you saw that number on the scale go down, you started getting stronger. I think we oftentimes when we want to get started again, it's not necessarily starting over, but like starting new, right? It's, it's yeah. we often beat ourselves up and, and kind of guilt, guilt ourselves as to like why we shouldn't do something or if something's not going to work. I mean, like I said, it's we're naturally going to go to, we're naturally going to find what's wrong in a process rather than having the faith of, um, you know, seeing the positives and to actually make a difference. And I think it starts from there. It starts with having belief and faith in yourself because confidence doesn't come right off the bat. You have to build it by mm -hmm. trusting yourself, building, um, building consistency, building those habits when you don't want to. And so confidence will come later. And when people start, they don't have the confidence, right? But when you build the faith and you build trust in yourself, um, more so that will inevitably build confidence and then obviously the results you see. Um, but from a tactical standpoint, you know, if you're get, just getting started, you're getting started again. Um, you know, I, I would always suggest, you know, start small, um, start with one habit at a time and start with an easy one because we will often as human beings will often go through a path of least resistance rather than one with most resistance. So if we want to get started and we think of, okay, I'm going to work out, I'm going to drink my water, I'm going to get eight hours of sleep, I'm going to get my all my steps in, that's going to seem overwhelming. And you're most mm -hmm. likely going to be like, nah, I'm not going to do it, right? I'm yeah. not going to do it all. Or then we, yeah. and then we try to do it and it lasts for a week and then we get disappointed and you know, it's that all or nothing mindset. So starting with something small and that could be simply as, uh, you know, drinking two liters of water a day, you know, get confident with that. Like have yeah. that one little commitment with yourself and do that. It could be going to the gym if that's easy for you and just start with that. Um, find something small that you could work with, accumulate the wins over time. And that from there will snowball and you can continue to add on and add on after that going forward. Yeah, I love that. And you know what? I'm going to encourage people to go onto your Instagram because you have so much amazing content there. And I think that women we are very intuitive and we know when some, when something feels right. Like for example, when I was on your Instagram, I knew that you were someone that um, really cared about people and that you're really taking people through a health journey and not just like this quick fix of lose weight and be on the cycle, uh, uh, that crazy cycle again, that you really educate people. And so I'm going to encourage women to go and start to look and then start to implement some of those changes but there comes a time where these little changes, yes, they're going to make a big impact, but there comes a time where it's time to like put yourself first and invest in the education so that you really do get the results out of the effort that you're putting in. Because there's nothing worse than, uh, I have a friend like not too long ago was like, I'm going to get fit. I'm going to do six classes a day. And then all of a sudden they were doing six classes, not six classes a day, six classes a week. And all of a sudden they weren't sleeping because their hormones were shot. They were probably putting themselves into adrenal fatigue because those classes were intensive. We always think like, uh, what is it? Um, sweat is fat crying, which is not true. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, you know, women. Just want to I've never intense. heard that before. <laughs> not true. I don't know if oh that was like gosh. an ad in the UK that I picked up on, but yeah. Like that, that wow. Um, and it's like, it's not true. You don't just sweat to be getting results and that these high intensity classes six days a week are actually for someone who has children at home is working full time. And then to add this and not, and all of a sudden it's impacting their sleep. Like they just, they were putting in so much effort and which was so commendable. And I thought like, good, for you because you're now committed however how sad to be putting in that effort into an area that into in a way that's actually going to leave you feeling more depleted and and could lead into bigger problems down the road as opposed to investing in yourself to get like the proper education around how to nourish your body how to care for yourself how to shift your mindset and so I'm just going to encourage anyone that goes onto your Instagram to then you know start to think of like taking that next step and um, investing in some coaching. So going from there, how can other than Instagram, or maybe that is the best way, but what is actually the best way for people to get in touch with you? Yeah, um, Instagram would probably be the best way at tinyfitgen. We also have uh, um, our company health and you has 
also an Instagram. You could follow that um, cool. uh, at health and you uh, letter N letter U underscore. Um, and then I also have a podcast. So it's the tiny fit podcast oh, cool. where I put out content as well. Not as much, I but um, if you want to yeah. hear more long form content on there, I highly recommend Excellent. checking out my podcast, but yeah, Instagram is the best way to uh, reach out. Amazing. I'll put that all in the show notes. I have one more question for you. It's a question I ask everyone, but before I get to it, is there anything that you want to add, like anything that I haven't, that we haven't touched on? Are, um, are you feeling good? <laughs> yeah, I think this is, this is really good. I, I've been uh, loving our conversation so far. Yeah. 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 There's so many like aha moments for me in this conversation. So yeah, I thank you so much for how um, you put so much thought and effort into all of these questions. So I so appreciate that. Okay. The last question is what is something you have heard or read that has changed everything for you? We all have these like little moments. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about that when you, when you asked me that when I saw that question and I think that's definitely changed over the years. I've had to mm-hmm. reuse certain mantras and, and stuff right now. So I think the one that has been really, um, really resonated with me recently was when I mentioned already was um, every level has its own devils. And, you know, right now I'm going through mm. a pregnancy phase. I'm currently five months Yay, pregnant. No one knows. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, it does come with its own challenges um, and mental and emotional struggles, right? The high influx of mm. hormones and getting ready to be a new mom. This is a huge transition and, and phase in my life. Um, and so yeah. really understanding that, you know, what you're going through is not necessarily bad. It's just a a phase in your journey that's going to level you up and make you even better. And I think oftentimes we associate ourselves with when we think of challenging times or things that really where we're faced with a lot of adversity, we tend to either, you know, back away or freeze or, you know, not do anything at all or go back the opposite, you know, and and really kind of spiral down. So, you know, having a really good practice in your faith and, and having, um, you know, belief that this is only a moment in time and to really enjoy it and to, um, you know, work through and have that good support system and, and know that you are only uh, one step further from becoming that, you know, newer version of the souls. And it's kind of like those growing pains that we kind of have to go through. So um, that's been a mantra for me right now in this current season. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, Jen. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks for sharing everything. And I'm so looking forward to continuing to follow your journey up until baby comes as well. And we wish you all the best. And it's all these exciting changes that you have ahead of you. And yeah, just keep inspiring the way you are. And um, I really um, encourage anyone listening that if they're feeling that like impulse of like, this is it, I really resonate with Jen, then just go on and at least reach out like just take that one step. It doesn't mean that you're committing to anything. Like, you know, I think so often we think too far ahead, just reach out and make that connection. So thank you so much. Have a great day and we'll stay in touch. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Where's the record? I don't want to end it.